Good morning and welcome to this online service from All Saints Church, Liverpool. My name's Ian. We're going to be having a reading this morning from Nehemiah 10. David Adder is going to speak to us on making investments that last. And Sarah Casson is going to lead us in prayers. We gather, although virtually, in the name of Jesus, and we set this time aside for God. We put him first at the start of the week, and we pray that he fills our time together. May he be meeting you where you're at. Your week may have had all sorts of turns to it. There may have been highs and lows, things to rejoice over, things to sorrow. And the change in circumstances with restrictions on our movements and what we can and can't do, uh, difficult to keep up with and difficult to bear. But may God give us grace in these unusual times. May God be with us. May God be with you in, in all that you do. May God be giving you the grace to manage in whatever situation you find yourself. And now as we start to worship, let's consider and reflect upon the words of David in Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness. O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Let's take a moment to reflect on that. And now, let your spirit worship as we join together to sing, I was buried beneath my shame. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn Till I made I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried
today is from Nehemiah 10 1 to 39 because 1 to 27 are names I have been asked to read from 28 to 39 the rest of the people priests Levites gatekeepers singers temple servants and all who separated themselves from the neighboring people for the sake of the law of God together with their wives and all their sons and daughters who are able to understand all these now join their brother, brothers, the noble, the blind, and blind themselves with a curse and an oath to follow the law of God given through Moses, the servant of God, and to obey carefully all the commands, regulation, and decrees of the Lord our God. We promise not to give our daughters in marriage to the people around us or take their daughters for our sons. When the neighbor Neighbouring people bring merchandise or grain to sell on the Sabbath. We will not buy from them on the day of Sab on the day Sabbath or on any holy day. Every seventh year we will forgo work in the land and will cancel all debt. We assume the responsibility for carrying out the commands to give a third of the shekel each year for the service of the God of the house of our God, for the bread set out on the table, for the regular grain offering offering and burnt offerings, for the offerings on the Sabbath, new moon, festival and appointed feast, for the holy offerings, for sin offerings to make atonement for Israel. And for all the duties of the house of our God, we, the priests, the Levites and the people have cast lots of determined when each other our families is to bring to the house of our God and set times each year to contribution of wood to burn on the altar of the Lord our God as it is written in the law we also assume responsibility for bringing to the house of the Lord each year the first fruits of our crops out of every fruit tree also it is also written 
in the law we will bring the firstborn of our son and of our cattle of our herds and of our flocks to the house of our God, to the priests ministering there. Moreover, we will bring to the storerooms of the house of our God, to the priests of the first of our God, of our ground meal, of our grain offerings, of the fruits of our trees and of our new wine and oil. And we will bring a tithe of our crops to the Levites for it is the Levites who collect the tithes in all the towns where we work. A priest descended from Aaron is to accompany the Levites when the, they receive the tithe. The Levites are to bring the tenth of the tithe up to the house of our God, to the storerooms of the treasury. The people of Israel, including the Levites, are to bring their contribution of grain, new wine and oil to the storeroom, where the articles for the sanctuary are kept, and where the ministering priests and gatekeepers and singers stay. We will not neglect the house of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome to today's sermon. I want to apologise for my voice. My voice is drying up, but I refused to reveal this because I wanted to do this. So bear with me on how, how, how we will progress today. We'll be looking at Nehemiah 10, 1 to 39. Very interesting subject. Making investments that last. This passage contains 39 verses. Verse 1 to 27 were names. These names look unimportant, but they were put in there for a purpose. These are names of the elders that represented their people to sign a covenant or to go into a covenant with God. We will break this thing down subheading by subheading for proper understanding. These names of those who sealed the covenant, like I said, was contained in 1 to 27, very long. 28 to 39 explained a little about what happened there. Nehemiah, his name was placed first in the role on account of his high official rank as deputy to the Persian monarch. All classes were included in the subscription. Everybody that subscribed to sign this covenant. In short, this, this arrangement was all inclusive. But the people were represented by their elders, which were the names I mentioned earlier. As it would have been impossible for everyone in the country to have been admitted to the ceiling. So the rest of the people bound themselves to observe it. Those who were not present at the ceiling ratified the covenant by giving their assent, either by words or by lifting up their hands and bound themselves by a solemn oath to walk in God's law, implicating a cost upon themselves in the event of their violating it. To observe and do all the commandments. This national covenant, besides containing a solemn pledge of obedience to the divine law generally, specified their engagement to some particular duties, which the character and exigency, the importance of the times stamped with great urgency and importance, and which may be summed up under the following heads, that they abstain from contracting matrimonial alliances with the heathen, no marriage to each other that they would rigidly observe the Sabbath. They will keep 
holy the Sabbath day, that they will let the land enjoy rest and remit death every seventh year. That they will contribute to the maintenance of the temple service, the necessary expenses of which had formerly been defrayed out of treasury of the temple. And when it was drained, given out from the king's privy purse, and that they would make an orderly payment of the priest dues. A minute and particular enumeration of the first fruits was made that all might be made fully aware of their obligations and that none might excuse themselves on pretext of ignorance from withholding taxes which the poverty of many and the irreligion of others may had made them exceedingly prone to evade. There's no giving excuses that, oh, I did not know I was supposed to remit this amount of money to the Levites. It was, it, everything was spelled out explicitly for everyone to understand. That is what this part is talking about. So the third part of a shekel for the service of the house of God the law required every individual above 20 years of age to pay half a shekel to the sanctuary. But in consequence of the general poverty of the people, occasioned by war and captivity, this tribute was reduced to a third part of a shekel. There was famine in the land, there was hunger, things were not really easy. So, uh, the agreement was reviewed and it was brought down to, to accommodate everybody to ensure that everybody are able everybody is able to make a contribution to the church in cash we cast the lots for the wood offering the carrying of the wood had formerly been the work of the netinims but few of them haven't returned. The duty was assigned as stated in the text. The practice afterwards rose into great importance and Josephus speaks. The priest, the son of Aaron, shall be with the Levites when the Levites take tithes. This was a prudential arrangement the presence of a dignified prince, I mean priest, would ensure the peaceful delivery of the tithes. At least his superintendence and influence would tend to prevent the commission of any wrong in the transaction by the people deceiving the Levites or the Levites defrauding the priest. The tithe of the tithes. The Levites, having received a tenth of all land produce, were required to give a tenth of this to the priests. The Levites were charged with the additional obligation to carry the tithes when received and deposit them in the temple stores for the use by the priest. And we will not forsake the house of God. This solemn pledge was repeated at the close of the covenant as an expression of the intense zeal by which the people at this time were animated for the glory and worship of God. Under the pungent feelings of sorrow and repentance for their national sins, of which apostasy from the service of the true God was the chief, and under the yet fresh and painful embrace of their protracted captivity, they vowed and as well grateful 
for their restoration. Flatter themselves, they would never forget their vow to be the Lord's. Some really, if you look at 1 to 31, we can easily summarize by saying the compassion is separating from the costs and custom of this world, devoting ourselves to the conduct directed by the word of God. When we bind ourselves to the commandments of God, it is to do all his commandments and to look to him as the Lord our God. So when you look at 32 to 39, having agreed, convent, convenanted against the sins of which they had been guilty, they obliged themselves to observe the duties they had neglected. We must not only cease to do evil, but learn to do well. Let not any people expect the blessing of God unless they keep up public worship. It is likely to go well with our houses when care is taken that the work of God's house goes on well. When everyone helps and everyone gives, do but little toward a good work, the whole will come to be a large sum. We must do what we can in works of pity and charity and whatever state we are placed in cheerfully perform our duty to God which will be the surest way to ease and liberty as the ordinance of God are the appointed means of support to our souls the believer will be grudge will not grudge the expense yet most people leave their souls to starve I hope we have taken one or two things from this. We can together gather in the church and work for God. Take up whatever roles we are given and do it with all seriousness and commitment. Contribute whatever you have in terms of food, money to the church to help, for the church to help to reach out to the needy. Have a blessed Sunday and, and, and thank you. I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created. So I'll run to the Father 
Let's pray. In our prayers today, we're going to use the following responses. When I say, Father, may your kingdom come, please respond with, may your will be done. Father, may your kingdom come, may your will be done. Our Father in heaven, we praise you that you are holy, good, faithful and rich in love. By your Holy Spirit, help us to honour you and to offer every part of our lives and ourselves as worship to you. Father, may your kingdom come. May your will be done. Lord of the nations, we bring our world to you. We acknowledge that you are sovereign and have the whole world in your hands. At this time we see so much turmoil and suffering across the world. We want to lift up to you particular places in crisis. India, Lebanon, the US, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Brazil. And we take a moment at home to name out loud any other places on our hearts right now.
please send your light and bring your healing and justice in these situations. We pray for wisdom and integrity for national leaders and for international understanding and cooperation. Father, may your kingdom come. May your will be done. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your good gifts that fill our lives, for strength and breath, for your beautiful creation, for family and friends, for your faithfulness in giving us what we need each day. We pray for those who are struggling to find food and shelter today, for the displaced, for refugees and migrants, for those facing unemployment and the loss of their homes, for those using our food banks. Please provide for them and please make us generous in sharing what you have given us. Father, may your kingdom come. May your will be done. Lord Jesus, we praise you for the forgiveness you offer us through your death on the cross. We praise you that you have the power to break every chain that binds us. We bring before you the temptations and the weaknesses we struggle with. By the power of your spirit, help us to forgive those who have hurt us, just as you have forgiven us. And in a moment of quiet, we bring to the cross the temptations we struggle with and those that we need to forgive. Father, may your kingdom come. May your will be done. We cry out to you, Lord Jesus, to deliver us and the whole world from the evil of coronavirus. We pray for healing for the sick, for comfort for the isolated, for strength for health services and for success and cooperation for those working on a vaccine. Please strengthen your church across the world to offer the living hope of the resurrection to those living in fear and grief. Father, may your kingdom come. May your will be done. And so, as God's family, let's gather up our prayers together with our brothers and sisters across the world as we pray the Lord's Prayer in our own languages. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, David, for that message and all those who have contributed to this morning's service. Mike for putting it together for us. Now a few things that we all might like to be aware of. When this service is finished, there will be virtual refreshments you might like to join in with. The details for that Zoom call will be on the screen at the end of the service. That will start at 12 noon. On Wednesday 30th, 7pm, we're hoping to restart CR. And on Thursday the 1st, the PCC will be meeting. Currently, worship services are exempt from COVID rules, so we can continue to worship at 10am at the parish church and 11am at the Worship Centre on Sundays. There are some birthdays to celebrate. Constance, Steve Rose and John Hajati. So here is the 
famous birthday song. One, two, three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Round of applause. And so before our final song, a blessing. Go forth into the world in peace, be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So we close with a final song, Nothing I Hold On To.
I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. Yeah, I see it now. I'm laying it down, and I know that I need you. I run to the Father, I fall in the grace. I'm done with the hiding, the reason away. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again. Son for redemption, the price for my heart, and I don't have a context for that kind of love. I don't understand. Long 
So 